Hey everyone, this is Alex Smith with 3 Max of Writing and My Honest Agent. And today I wanted to talk about how to make a winning offer. Uh, today I had a really frank conversation with a couple buyers about the process it takes for some people to get to this point. Um, but expecting another competitive market coming up in 2022 in my market in Berks County, uh, we really do expect people to know this going in. And at least if you want to make sure that you win on a property that you really fall in love with, um, here's a few tips of, of how to do that and the things to do in your offer or how to structure your offer to make sure that, yes, I am going to get this, or at least I am at the top of that list and, and definitely considered. So uh, tune in. Here we go. So first, you have to consider a few things. You want to consider the price range that you're in and being honest with who else is competing in that price range. So in my market, uh, in the two hundred and fifty to $350,000 range, um, it is extremely competitive. But once you tip over like four hundred, four twenty-five. dollars things really shift, um, you know, even under 200, it's still really competitive because people are commonly, you know, that's a middle-class area and commonly are approved in that area. But the 250 to 350 range is super duper aggressive. So consider where you are at in your market with how aggressive you have to be. And you might not necessarily have to do every one of these things, but if you are you know, going into an area that you really want to be in, that a lot of people really want to be in, a perfect example of this is Lidditz in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Super competitive. A lot of people want to live in Lidditz. Um, so you, know, you might be checking off a majority of these things in your offer to make sure that you have even a shot at getting a home because in certain price ranges in Lidditz, if, even if you have financing, it's just that factor is super difficult to um, be considered because there's so much cash buyers in that area. The first thing, and I think this kind of goes without saying, if the property is meeting the value of what they have it listed at, um, going over asking or putting in an escalation clause might be necessary. So an escalation clause is I will beat any offer by X amount up to this amount. So say I will beat any offer by $1,000 um, uh, starting at 100 and I my max is 110. So you would beat any offer up to 110. So going over asking, I mean, commonly, so there's some people that get some complex about, you know, over going over what the property is listed for, but Honestly, there's people that are willing to do that. So if you need to move, you need to accept that going over is something that in a competitive market does happen. Another one that is really good and I think kind of guarantees the seller money the most is covering the appraisal if it comes in low or covering the transfer tax for the seller. So in the city of Reading, transfer tax is two and a half percent per side, 5% total. That's the highest in the state of Pennsylvania. So on a $100,000 house, if you offer to cover both sides of the transfer tax, you are essentially offering $100,000 plus $2,500, that 2.5% 2 that the seller would be paying because they now no longer have that charge that is your charge. You are coming up with cash at the settlement table. The second part of that is the appraisal coverage. So if that property is listed for 95,000 and you offer 100,000, you can offer to cover up to $5,000 if the appraisal falls short. So what that means is if the appraisal comes in at $95,000, the bank won't loan on that 5,000. You would have to come up with that at the table. So instead of having that part of your mortgage, you would have to have that as an upfront cost. If you want a little more explanation about that, feel free to reach out. It's definitely a bit more complex and not seen as much up until 2020 and 2021. Another one that I wanted to talk about and another section of the agreement that I think you need to really, really consider the ramifications of because there is long-term effects of ownership of a home. Um, there's things that go wrong and you need to be prepared for that. So either considering your financial position after you would purchase the home or considering the home itself 
you really just need to understand that the opportunity to elect and waive inspections is a super big decision. There's a multitude of inspections. The most common in Berks County is a septic test, a water test, a home inspection, a termite test, and a radon test. So those are all different types um, of inspections you can get. And considering whether to elect or waive those, you know, goes with a lot of factors. And I think it's something you have to consider with your agent per property. You know, I consider the how old the home is. I consider how long the current owner has had it. And if there's a disclosure and what that disclosure states, I consider the age of the roof and the mechanicals and if they've been kept up with or serviced at any point in time. I consider how old a septic system is or how old a well is and how much filtration is on that well system on that public or um, private water system. So there's a lot to consider and I really do think that's per property and with your agent. A large deposit is something you really want to keep in mind. So if you have the capability of putting down with your escrow or with your agreement of sale, you know, $5,000 or $10,000 to be held in escrow until closing, uh, I usually tell people that no matter how much that amount is, the risk is still the same, whether you put a dollar down or $10,000 down. So if you can't get a mortgage because you lost your job or the appraisal came in short, you would get that deposit back. If you have inspections and something goes wrong with the inspections and you would like to walk away from the property within your time frame, you would get those that deposit back. So a larger deposit really shows strength just from a position of, I have money in the bank to, if something goes wrong, I'm not just going to walk away. And that's how I look at it with my sellers. If someone is putting up $1,000 on a $300,000 home, I'm going to say, hey, something's up here. I don't know why they're only putting $1,000 down. You have to consider their financing and how much they're putting down with that. But as an escrow, that seems a little low for that price point. I usually recommend at least $5,000, no matter what the scenario is, because right now in any price point, having a large deposit really shows strength. This one is a really good one. And I think something you should know off the gate is you need to be pre-approved um, or have proof of funds if you're a cash buyer. Having that ready or having a local bank and something you should consider with your agent is what is considered local, what is a good bank to use. Um, in a competitive situation, the agents are gonna look at who is financing your loan and they're gonna go from their personal experience. So as biased as that is, using a local person that has the most ties to the most people in the community is really recommended because they can see you have the most likelihood of that agent having an experience with that bank that was positive or having somebody else that had an experience with that bank that was positive as well. You should also consider what, how much you're putting down on your property and what type of loan you're going through. So in my market in Berks and Lancaster County, it's a little bit uh, tough with the FHA buyers right now just because there's so much cash and, and ability to go with a conventional loan that has some clear and upfront um, points to it that, that help the seller know that there's one less hiccup, at least with the repairs that an FHA or VA or USDA loan would require. The last one I'm gonna write here is meeting dates and amenities that are preferred. So if the seller wants to sell in 30 days, trying your best to fit that. If the seller wants to sell in 45 days, doing your best to fit that. Um, if they only wanna sell the refrigerator range and dishwasher and they want to take the washer and dryer, um, just leaving that be and, and saying, yes, that's okay with me is the best thing you can do. So trying to fit that and um, the agreement around what they prefer to do, I think goes without saying, definitely helps your, uh, your offer uh, get boosted to the top. So that's six things you can do to help boost your offer. Um, I really hope that this gives you an idea of the expectation you should go into when looking at a property. Like if you really want it and it's the one for you, you should not hesitate to do all of these things to make yourself at the top of that list. If there's 10 offers, there's no second place, there's no third place. So um, only one person gets the home and hopefully it is you. <laughs> so good luck out there and uh, go Berks County. Thanks everybody.